strength, leadership, power, authority, guidance, patience, are God's gift to us as men. We have to cherish that, not abuse it. I prayed this morning to be a better listener. It didn't work so well. <laughs> it's we're human. You get back up. Yes, I've been high up on the mountain. I've been blessed. But that's a slippery slope. Yeah. And it's lonely up there. You know, people don't know that side. We did not come this far to just break down and lose now. I'm a winner. I'm going to win. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you. Sit beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. Aspire to make a difference. So you are what you are in this world. It's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. Never give up. Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. If it were easy, there'd be no Denzel Washington. So, keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So, keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. While it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. So you got to get out there, you got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now, I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything. I want to fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Fail big. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and it can, be, it can be very frightening. It's a new world out there, it's a mean world out there, and you only live once. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances, professionally. Don't be afraid to go outside the box. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail 
big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. And they ultimately fuel disappointment. So have dreams, but have goals. Life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out. <laughs> Simple goals, but have goals. And understand that to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. In order to achieve your goals, you must apply discipline, which you have already done, and consistency every day, not just on Tuesday and miss a few days. You have to work at it. Hard work works. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I don't care how much money you make, you can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. They got robbed. That's all they got. You can't take it with you. And it's not how much you have. It's what you do with what you have. We all have different talents. Some of you will be doctors, some lawyers, some scientists, some educators, some nurses, some preachers. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling, the good feeling that I get from helping others, nothing's better than that. Well, one or two things, but nothing's better than that. Not, not jewelry, not big house I have, not the cars, but the, the, it's the joy. That's where the joy is in helping others. That's where the success is. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Remember, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Remember that, just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse movement with progress. My mother told me, she said, yeah, because you can run in place all the time and never get anywhere. So continue to strive, continue to have goals, continue to progress. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what's using my life? Heard a guy give a lecture one time that says, we are today what we were when. And he was talking about the fact that we, to a great extent, behave, think, react because of some previous experience that we've had. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. See, anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. Am I correct? Yeah. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. When I was facing some challenges, I had a guy say something to me and I suggest this is one of the first things that you want to do 
when you're facing a challenge, you want to get unstuck. Evaluate where you are. Look at it. Assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What role did you play? Earl Nightingale had a saying I like. He said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. What has brought you to this point? What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything? Or are you doing it over and over and over again? Somebody said that insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? Because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. I was going through a major challenge in my life that was wearing me out, that was using me. Well, you see, your mind is, is, you know, when you go into a service station to get gas, you don't go in there and just start pumping. When you push the lever up, it clears the previous bill. By the same token, if you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. I couldn't move, I couldn't think about what am I going to do to get out of this situation because I was so concerned about what happened and what he did to me and how bad it was. I was so stuck in that, I couldn't even focus on what I should have done. Feeling sorry for myself and angry and none of that was taking me anywhere. So pretty soon I, I learned through effort, made a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. I had to let it go. I had to forgive it. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is what are you going to do about it? All of us have experienced some tragedy, and if we haven't, we will. And you can either let it destroy your life, or you can build upon it. You can permit it to let, you, let it hold you down, or you can decide, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump, just like sports. Some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, you know, I just didn't hit a basket today? No, they continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. Continue to move. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Sometimes you have to just back up and go within yourself. A bow and arrow, you, you can't take a bow and just push it out an arrow. You just can't push the arrow out. You have to pull it back and then release it. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you are under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a god. You know, I loved reading the book called As a Man Think It by James Allen. He uses the analogy of the mind being like a garden. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. Am I right? But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself.
But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it and you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If, if it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out to yes. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. The other thing is take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. So one said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this and I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. And he said the people that get along in this life look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. They create them. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies, and changing your strategy means reinventing your life recreating you and you have the power to do that you can decide that you're going to change that you're not going to be a wimp you can decide that you're going to stand up to life you can decide that i'm going to live each day as if it were my last you can you have the power to make that decision you can decide i'm going to work on myself and develop myself i'm going to empower me and all of these things that are happening to me right now they're just temporary inconveniences they're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. It's your turn. There's nothing wrong. You don't owe nobody nothing. It's, it's your turn. You shouldn't feel guilty. It's your turn. It's your time. You've blessed everybody else. You've set everybody else for success. You've compromised you for them. And look where you are. It's time for you. And don't you know? that the best thing you could do for them is to be the best version of you? Don't you understand that? That, the, that? that you're not helping them by not being the best version of you? The only way you're really going to bless them is to be the best you you can be. So many people are waiting. You're, you're waiting for things to be perfect. You're waiting for everyone to get themselves together. You're waiting for someone to invite you into the room. You're waiting for someone to give you a seat at the table. You're waiting for someone to validate your gift. You're waiting for someone to call your name. You're waiting for someone to give you the opportunity. You're waiting for everything to line up. You're waiting for all the situations to come together perfectly. And I'm telling you, you cannot wait. You gotta start working right now. Depression is not waiting for you to get it together. Poverty's not waiting. Poverty's not waiting for the perfect moment, for the convenient time to get on you. No, 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 no. Poverty will just roll up on you and disrupt your entire life. Fear's not waiting. Stress is not waiting. Your bills are not waiting. 
And if fear is not going to wait to attack you, then you can't wait to attack it. Some of you, you have a problem, like you the old standard car, right? You, the new cars are automatic. They got a the automatic starter. You just hit the button, like you don't even do the key no more. You just push the button and it starts on its own. Unfortunately, we weren't made just to start on our own. You got to find your why and your why is what's going to start you. And so for a lot of you, you're not doing nothing because you don't have any purpose right now. You don't have a sense of purpose. You're not waking up for nobody. And I need you to get that engine. I need that drive because you know what to do. You, you're the right person to do it, but you just can't seem to get out of bed. You can't seem to do what you're supposed to do. Every time you come up against a trial or a tribulation, you let it stop you. Like you don't have... The problem with most of you, you are a four-cylinder. And when you hit trials and tribulations, you can't make it up the hill. I want to help you as I leave because people look at me and go, E, man, you passionate got going on. No, you listen to me very closely. The reason why you got to be the best in the world because they treat you differently when you're not. The reason why you have to be your best version because if you're not your best version, they treat you differently. When you're not your best version and you're not multiplying and having dominion, you got different kind of health care. Look, my wife, okay, so we go to the hospital. I know something wrong because we sit in the room and it takes 40 minutes for them to come in. So I'm like, okay, usually it takes a long time because they're trying to think of like how are we gonna break the news to? So they cut the lights off, we got a screen like this. They show a, a, her brain, the image of her brain, and they take the little laser boy and put it up on the... And when I look at it, you see like seven little spots on her brain. So I ain't, you know, I ain't no doctor. I told you I got a GED. I ain't brilliant, but I ain't dumb. I know those spots ain't supposed to be there. So I'm talking to the doctor and she, you know, they going round about. I'm like, look, ma'am, just, you know what I'm saying? Just keep it watch. What's, what's, what is this? She's like, well, we don't know if it's cancerous, but we believe that it's MS, it's multiple sclerosis. And I was like, all right, what is that? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what that is. I'm like, what is it? Is she going to die? You know, that's the first thing. For real, like, you don't know. Like, that's the first thing. I'm like, is she going to die? It was like, no, it's, it's, it's chronic. She's going to live with it forever. I'm like, what? Well, she is here, but if it get on her spine and it's not going to be able, she's not going to be able to walk. She could possibly not see. Like, she, we going over all the hookup. I'm like, all right, back. We leave the hospital. My wife is looking at me in the hospital. My girl don't cry. The doctor asks her, like, yo, you, you, you straight? My, my wife, she, my wife, she don't move. The doctor's like, okay, good. Now, you know you're going to have to take off work for about three or four months because we're going to have to do some testing. And my girl start she, a teardrop. The doctor was like, whoa, I just told you you had MS, you didn't cry. I just told you I'm to take off work. You crying. You didn't have insurance? She's like, yeah, we got insurance. But my wife's job is like her identity. So we get home. We sit down and talk. I call Moni like she got MS, Moni. I know about MS because her best friend in college got it. And she in the wheelchair. Came one of her arms. She can't. She has little slurred. So I'm like, all right, it's showtime. My wife ain't there yet, so let me find out what to do. I started doing all my homework. Homework says the only thing that they know causes is stress. So I might have been like the number 10 motivational speaker at that time. Number five, your boy going to hyperdrive. I start studying. My wife going to work again. She coming home stressed out. I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. You going to have to quit. She's like, well, I don't mind quitting, but do you got enough money? Like, you got enough money for me to quit? I'm like, you know I got enough money. She's like, no, I'm not talking about for the year or two. I'm talking about for the next 30 years. I went from the number 10, number 5, to the number 1 motivation speaker in the world. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying? I started getting on stage and realizing, like, yo, people was like, yo, E, why are you what? You just went to a whole other level. I'm not speaking no more to entertain. I'm not speaking to help me. I'm speaking so my girl never have to go back to work again. I'm speaking so that the MS don't kill her. I got a different drive. I got a different why. I got to make this $1.8 million so my girl can quit for the rest of her life. I'm taking all gigs. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the problem with some of you in this room, you don't have no drive. You ain't got nothing pushing you. You ain't got no reason for waking up in the morning. You ain't got no reason for pushing past that pain. You have no reason. You better find one before you get out of here today. I gotta get it to San Diego. 
I could take some shortcuts, but you don't take shortcuts for the person who was there with you when you were homeless. You don't take shortcuts for the person that was hide you in their mama's house and feed you in the winter months because she didn't want you out in the cold. You don't take you don't take shortcuts for the person that made you go to college. You don't take shortcuts for the person that was able to get the first house in her name because your credit was shot. You don't take the you don't take the the shortcut with somebody that had your two kids and was on a hospital bed could have died having your baby. You don't take a shortcut for people you love. You rise to the level and do what you got to do. You better go inside. You still looking outside for the stuff that's already inside. You still looking for someone to save you when you already your superhero. You looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you. I can means I have the ability to do it. I got what it take. I have the ability to do it. I got what it take to get a PhD. No, 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 I'm not. I'm academically, I'm not there. I'm not, but I am, I am average skilled, but I'm phenomenally willed. I got what it take. I got average skill, but I got phenomenal will. I can, I have the ability to do it. I will, somebody count on me. I will. I have the willpower to make it happen. I must. My wife needs me. I must. My son needs me. I must. My daughter needs me. I didn't do what my father did and drop out, and then I dropped out. I didn't do what my grandfather did, drop out, and then I dropped out. I will. I will make a way for my kids. Guess what? They don't even know what FASPA is. They don't know what a loan is. Why? Because I put the I put two hundred thousand dollars aside cash for both of them to pay for them to go to school. I must. It's not an option. And the reason why some of you are not where you're supposed to be, you've given yourself an option. You've given yourself an out. You've given yourself an excuse. You've given yourself room not to do it. I want you to think about that love one. I must. I will not lead them to do it themselves. I must. I will not leave them handicapped. I must. I will not leave my wife in a wheelchair. Not on my watch. She will not get in the wheelchair. My, she will not lose her sight on my watch. She will not not be able to walk. Not on my watch. You will go to Cali. You live. You will live in that house. You will get a pool. You will learn how to swim. You will be in the sun in the winter time. You will live your best life. I am not on my watch. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself of some stuff that has happened on your watch. You have allowed some stuff to happen on your watch that should have never happened on your watch. You must be your best best version. You must be your best version because somebody is counting.